well having a good morning after some early cancellations. Now in a moment, we go up a thousand feet above London's traffic with Brian Wolf and the Flying Eye. But first, a classic oldie released ten years ago today. What do you want? What's that? Morning, Terence. Meet Daly's deal. What? Daly's deal? Meet Terence, your new kennel person. Be careful how you hold that lead. Terrence. What? Now listen, Terence. This is your actual eye thoroughbred animal. Hmm? And as such, he's hypersensitive to any form of maltreatment or rejection. I want you to remember that at all times. Oh, well, you can forget all this, mate. Pardon? I'm not looking after a dog. Dog? Dog? Mongrel's a dog? This little miracle of nature is a, a racing machine, a greyhound. A prince among sporting canines. Listen, it's got four legs, a tail, and it barks. It's a dog. I don't think you quite understand, Terry. I don't want to understand, Arthur. You say you've got to meet? Yeah. Cotillotelli's well, off a couple of geezers. It's got a way with the reddies. Dave, what kind of a question was that? Sorry, I spoke. Hello, chaps. You found it, then? Yeah. How's it going, Tasty? All right? Scratching a few pennies here and there, you know? Uh, Dave, a couple of pals of mine, Fred and Ted. Pleased to meet you, gents. Well, what's it going to be? Large scotches and uh, whatever you want for yourself. Yeah, I'll get these. No, no, leave off. I'll do it. Oh, come on, get it off, get it off. Oi, oh, what's, what's the matter with you? Don't you like God's creatures? Yeah, I love them. But I don't want one living this, sprawling all over the furniture. Come on, Fido. Calm I'll... down, calm down. It's just for a few days till I get him settled in with a trainer at White City. White City? Yeah. You've got Didlow or something. That's a top GRA track, isn't it? That's where they hold the dog derby. Yeah. The only race of cream there. That's right. You ready? What for? Trial run. Come on, DD. <laughs> <laughs> Same again, Dave. Then we'll have to split. Oh, this one's on. No, me. no, 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 no. There you go. I insist. Now listen, it's your living. Let me. You insist. What bit of lunacy made you buy a greyhound, eh? Well, I didn't buy him. I took him in lieu. What well, a public lieu? No, no, in lieu of Reddy's. Paddy Early was into me for a few quid and couldn't come up with it, so he let me have the pick of the litter. That's why I call him Daly's Deal. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, he was only into me for two hundred sovs, and I mean the great great progeny of Mick the Miller there. Couple of grand the right way. Are we talking about the same Paddy Early? Yeah, well known breeder and trainer of many a win forecast combination. <laughs> did he tell you that, did he, eh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no, this will do, this will do. Stay here. What? what? Now, Terry, unleash him, but restrain him. Restrain him? Yeah. He's sleepwalking now. I mean, how do you expect to get him to run, eh? eh? Oh, 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 brilliant, brilliant. Right, stay there. Ready? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready, yeah. I don't know about him, though. <laughs> no, no, don't be misled by the intensity of the concentration, Terry. He's going to spring like a panther. Stand on me. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready, yeah. Kill! Kill! He's still ready. Well, that'll have to do it, folks. We've really got to go. Are you sure? Oh, yeah. About the other person. What? Blimey. Reason you're here. Sorry, chaps. Don't worry about Dave. He's one of your own. Ah. Oh. No offence, Dave, it's just that, uh, you know. I didn't cop a daffin to what went on here. I wouldn't have any members at all. <laughs> <laughs> see you, Dave. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah take it easy. See you later, mate. No good hollering and hooting. We had a deal and that's it. And you got the bargain. Bargain? Bargain? This animal has narco leprosy. Not to mention total paralysis of its lower limbs, namely its legs. Don't you listen to him, Dee Dee. Oh, come on, Arthur. You've only had the bloody thing a few hours. Yeah, long enough to recognise certain movement deficiencies. Run, he can't even trot. The best he can do is walk. And that's backwards, slowly. That's only because he ain't had a chance to get used to you. It's a proper thoroughbred, isn't it? They're highly strained. You have to give them a bit of time. Time? Listen, Paddy. Down, Fritz! Arthur, all the dog needs is a bit of care and attention, and it will be a flying machine. You take my word. 
And if that don't work, tuck a bit of mustard up its tuckers. That'll make it shift a bit lively. Tuck a bit of mustard? Good grief, Paddy, what are you suggesting? What's he feeding you on, Till? Tennis balls. Looking forward to this, are you? Ooh. Come on then, sir. Well, ain't your appetite, is it, Fido? Steak. Yeah, steak. And brown bread. Brown bread? Yeah, you know, roughage. Ruff, ruff. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you something else Paddy gave me a tip for. Well, nothing I have to invest in, I have. When the dog is ready to run, just before the off, you know, a certain unspeakable procedure with mustard would enhance its performance no end, if you get my meaning. You do what? Half of me, old son. How's business? Oh, subject to the usual fluctuations, Tasty. You? About the same, about the same. The usual, Dave. Won't be yourself and Arthur. No. Oh, it's hard. That is a large one, Dave. Oh, of course, sir. Hey, Tasty, do you know anything about the vagaries of a sporting canine? What? Greyhounds. Oh. Well? I don't know. Some. The mate of mine's got a couple. He races. Well, what do you want to know? Well, I've just acquired one. I want to know how to make it run. Well, I could give him a ring, I suppose. Ask him. There you go, gents. Two large vodkas. Sorry, Sorry. Tom. Yeah, would you? Yeah. All right. There you go. Go on, then. Go on, stick. Oh, God. Come on, then. Come on. Yeah, it might be interesting. How many? Say, uh, 30. Well, what have they got to come to? One or a lump? I'll see what I can do, ring you back. Mm. Blimey, hang on a bit. Hey, Dave. Yeah, yeah, cool. Tarby. Yeah, right. Listen, um... There is one thing might come in handy. Where is it? Three. Three down. Nice. Gentle start. You're three. And another five. Hello, Charlie. Ronald. Keeping your busy, are they? Never exactly slack in this job, are they? I don't know. What, you got a heavy caseload, have you? Who hasn't? Well, I've had a bit of a result this week, Charlie. I practically cleared my desk and secured a couple of convictions as well. Really? Things are always easier when your prospects volunteer written confessions, ain't they? Really? Well, as you are up to your ears, in it, I won't keep you, Charlie. Oh, if there is anything you need a bit of help with, let me know. Always happy to help out. Come on. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Sorry, Gov. What does that need a bit of help? Bloody arrogance. Well, if he says so, do you think it'll work? Well, so Ted says. He knows a bit about dogs. That was him in here yesterday with his partner, Fred. Oh, yeah. Seem like an all right couple. They ain't from round here, though, are they? No, no, no. They're from over the water. But I've done a few trades with them. A couple of your own, you know what I mean? Well, they seem proper enough. Which, uh, makes me think, Arthur, you, uh... No, 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 you wouldn't be interested. Interested in what? Well, when I was on the blog just now about your dog, Fred happened to mention he'd uh, got a little parcel on offer. Uh, yeah, well, look, I'll uh, just get a couple of drinks, you know. Oh? And what might that be? Video recorders. Video recorders? Oh, what? Terry! What's the meaning of this? Meaning of what? Hello, Tasty. Hello, Hello you want pedigree racing hound in a place like this? Oh, we ain't fussy. Should have seen what we fancied in the park. Ugh. Give us off. Coming up. What are you fancied? You haven't been letting this animal drain his natural energy, have you? But he don't even know what his legs are for, let alone the other. Cause a serious setback in his training schedule. Good, yeah. I suppose that cigar's not going to do him any harm, no, eh? Is, is that it? Yep, yeah, that is it. Oh, he's got nice eyes. Shame about the legs. <laughs> Sorry, Tasty. You were uh, saying something about these video machines. Oh, yeah, you interested? Well, it depends how many and how much. Well, they got 30 of them. They? 
Fred and his pal. They're asking a tour apiece. I'm not interested. Ah, don't worry, I know I can bid them down to one and a half. These ain't your cheapy models. They retire over six in the shops. I'm interested. Hold on, hold on. What's the history on these video machines? What's the what? History. Uh, Geezer they know of a long firm. Unloading his stock before the creditors move in. In other words, a rookie. No, no, not really. That's like bankrupt stock that's innocently sold off before the receiver steps in, right, Arthur? Yeah, perfectly normal business procedure. I mean, all your respectable defaulters do it. Oh, yeah. So who are these two pals of yours, then, eh? Uh, Dave knows them. Yeah, Dave, here a minute. Oh, they are cash customers. Tell them. Well, of course I'm interested. Tell me more. When is this going off? But you will let me know, won't you? Well, it'd better be right, because I've got to tell you, you're well overdue, my son. Well overdue, if you take my meaning. You know how to get in touch. Good news, is it, Gav? Could be, Jones. Could be. Oh. What? Nothing. Nothing. Just wondering, like, you know. That happens to be a personal informant of mine who's been intelligent enough to give me some interesting intelligence about a little firm knocking out bent videos. Know them, do we? No, not yet. We will. We will. Did he have anything useful to whisper in your ear, then, girl? If he's right, Mellish, more than useful, more than useful, this could be a bloody big coup. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. This could mean that I should be nicking the bold Arthur Daly and his crony, Terry McCann, banker rights in a very serious criminal exercise. You don't think he's sick or something, do you? Well, you know what Paddy said, he's homesick. I mean, he'd tell you himself if he could talk. He can't talk at all, can he? <laughs> Well, he's got no woof to his mouth. Please, Terry. Jokes in bad taste are not good for his morale. Well, you never know, it might make him run away. He'll run. I have something in here that will bring about a devastating turn of poor. What's that, a large economy jar of Coleman's, is it? Eh? Hey? It's OK, it's a All right? Yeah, I fixed up a meat. He shouldn't be too long. You meeting him here? Yeah. I don't see why this little bit of business should interfere with DD's trading schedule. You sure you know what you're getting into with this video deal? Yeah, they want to sell, I want to buy it. What's the problem? You don't know the geezers. They could be anybody. Well, Tasty's done business with them. Yeah, well, I've always had him down as a bit slippery and all. Nah, that's just his way. Anyway, Dave says they're proper people. What, on the strength of one drink? Look, what are you worrying about? What am I, a mug or something? What do you mean? He wants a sample? Well, it shouldn't be a problem, should it? You're joking, aren't you? You will try not to mark, damage or abuse it, Fred, won't you? Don't worry, Harry. It'll be safe. Thanks, mate. Yeah. Just bring it back intact, though. Faster, Terry, faster. I'm going as fast as I can. Put it in high gear, then. It's in the ice gear already. What? Oh, no, it's completely ridiculous. It, this spool's too small. Look. It was all ready to spring forth when you stopped. Get back on. No. What is the matter with you? DD was all ready for the off. Listen, if I'd been on the road, I would have been doing about 100 miles an hour. Oh, yeah? Oh, that's stupid, that thing. It should be the same size as the wheel. I told you that before we started. That is just your excuse. My well, excuse will give me strength. Well, somebody better. Hey, the bloke's your meeting. Yeah. 
No, you must have misheard me. I said a motorbike, didn't I? I mean, it's obvious, isn't it? Sorry, Arthur. Got it a bit wrong. That bike with a special fixtures put me back 38 sobs. And now you tell me you got it wrong. Well, it don't matter. I mean, nothing's gonna make this run. Yeah, some of them can be like that. Bloody Paddy. I reckon he knew. Oh, really? Well, that's... How about our bit of business? Yeah, right. Uh, Tasty says you want to view the goods before. Uh, yeah, yeah, no disrespect, Fred, but I like to do things proper. You do understand. Oh, of course, Arthur. Wouldn't be right to part with any wedge until he's seen what you get. Well, exactly. Want to have a look at it here? Here? Yeah. We've got one tucked in the boot. Oh. Um, yeah, all right. Yeah, it looks like the business. What do you reckon, Terry? Well, it's all right, I suppose. I don't know. 20, eh? 30. I thought Tasty was having 10. Oh, uh, I had to stick some dough into something else, Arthur. I can only take five. If you want the rest. Well, I'll tell you what, make them a one or a piece and I'll take them. No, forget it. I mean, we've got to get a bit out of it, haven't we? I thought you said he'd agreed a price. Yeah. That's what I thought. Come on, Fred. I ain't being pissed around like this. Bernie said he'd take half of them, and for what we're asking. Yeah, you're right. Still want yours, don't you? Yeah. Well... Yeah, right, we'll sort it out later. Now, hang on, chaps, don't let's be hasty. I'm sure we can come to a compromise on this price. How about one and a quarter? Excuse us a minute, will you? Yeah. yeah. What are you doing, Arthur? That's gonna make me look a right mug, isn't it? Don't be sorry, Tasty. I'm doing you a favour. They'll think I'm a right mug if I don't bid, won't they? If you want my opinion, I think you ought to forget the old bleeding thing. Yeah, well, we don't want your opinion. I think when it comes to business decisions, I make them. Oh, <laughs> yeah? What, like the double shrewd deal you did with Paddy earlier, no, eh? No, no, don't, don't worry. You will be paying a visit to Paddy. Will I? Oh, yeah. Make it 135 a lump and they're yours. 130 and you've got a trade. OK. Did you see him then, Gav? I did, yes. Oh? They'll be at it tonight, and so will we. Not much to go on, is it, though? A couple of Christian names, no descriptions. No matter. It's a bonus. Oh? Guess who the buyer is. Right. Ta very much. The result, Gav? <laughs> the right result. Daly and McCann are as good as holding hands on the exercise yard in the scrubs. When do we move in then, Gav? Have you got somewhere to go? As soon as we're sure they've got the gear. When does Arnie want the van back? Oh, I said any time in the morning it'd be all right. Listen, why didn't you get them just to deliver straight round to the lockup? They haven't got suitable transport. No, we meet them at the boozer with Tasty and then we collect from their geezer. Are you sure this is kosher? How can it not be, Terry? That's it, over there. Cheers. 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 You sure he'll show? Of course he will. Loves a deal, half a day. Charlie Chisholm's face when I walk into the station with both Daly and McCann on a lead. There'll be one up on Sergeant Wright cut if you collar them, won't it? I mean, if it's good as nicked. Right, shall we get going then? 
No point in all of us schlepping around there. You take Terry to pick up the parcel. We'll dwell here till he gets back. Is that all right with you, Arthur? Certainly, Fred, yes, certainly. Tasty? Yeah, suits me. As long as we don't have to hang around too long. I've got some other business to see. All right, off you go, then. Mm. Right. No, 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 come on, off. Let me finish my bleeding drink first. Must be one of them with a can no go. Don't get overexcited, Jones, they'll be back. Take long, will it? Well, we've got time for a few more drinks. Yeah. Darling. I thought you said it was just up the road. Don't worry, it ain't much further. God, I hate these places. That's where he lives. Yeah, first floor, number 10. Uh, you might as well keep an eye on the van while I go and get him. I won't be long. I thought you said they wouldn't be long. I can't hang about, you know. In fact, I shouldn't be here now. Yeah, well, they've got to collect the geezer, don't they? Get round to his warehouse and load up. Takes a bit of time, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but listen, Arthur, you don't mind if I slip, do you? No, not at all. But what about... I'll weigh in with my bit now, then I'll call round and pick up my stuff from your lock-up tomorrow, if you don't mind. No, 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 that's fine, but don't you want to... Uh... Uh, no, no, no. Give it to Arthur to hold. That way we keep everything properly, you know. OK. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll see you then. Yeah. Tomorrow. Right. Oh, by the way, can you shift those TVs I've got here? No problem. Went the same day. See you then. Me and Ted have got to meet as well. Hope they ain't going to be much longer. What's he bloody doing, back on his own? Do you think we ought to make a move now, Gav? No. Why not? Because what would be the point without the evidence? Critting. Hello? Oh, sorry to bother you. Can I have a word with Ted, please? Ted who? Ted, he just came up here. About my mate, fair curly hair. I think you got the wrong flat. There ain't no fair curly haired bloke here. <laughs> In fact, there ain't no bloke here. No, he definitely said number 10. Well, you're certainly welcome to come in and look around. Well, maybe some other time, mate. Sorry about that. Hey, what's the matter? You prejudiced or something? Puncture? Yeah, about a mile up the road. It was a front tire as well. I thought we was going to smash into this post box. <laughs> but we didn't. Everything's all right, isn't it? I mean, you don't damage none of the. Uh... No, 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 they're all right. Mine, I'm glad Plod weren't about to make themselves busy. <laughs> he was having a bit of ag fix in the spare, so I jumped in a cab to let you know. In case anyone was wondering where we were. Mind you, it's a bleeding nuisance. We're supposed to be over the other place about now. Yeah, you're right. Hey, but what about... It's OK, we'll jump in the motor and drop you off at Terry in the van. All oh, right, I'll just finish this. Uh, what about the, uh... <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, you forgot. <laughs> you got the dough, Arthur? Dough? You know, for the, uh... Oh, yeah, yeah, it's all there. Well, give it then and let's get going. What, give it to you now? Would you want to stand in the middle of the street checking the parcel for, like, counting money? No, no, of course not, but I think I'll hang on to the reddies until I've seen... Do me. what? Take it easy, Ted, don't start. Don't start, don't start. I didn't want to knock him out to him in the first place. All right, all right. All right nothing. I've been running around like a loon, humping the bleeding gear. No, sod him. Let's flog him to Bernie, like I said, and we'll make more for our end. OK, OK, look, Kurt, you get yourself a drink, and uh, me and Arthur will be back in a minute. Come on, Arthur. Come on, with. Where's less public?
sorry about that, Arthur. Ted's as good as gold, really, but he can get a bit violent if he thinks people are taking liberties. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to upset him. Funny, you wouldn't think to look at him, but he murdered a geezer once. Murdered? Yeah, but he had a result, got it reduced to manslaughter. Only ended up getting a five. Oh. Look, um, it's not that I don't trust you, understand, but uh, just to keep him happy, if you want to just let me check the dough. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course, you put it like that, then why not? Only if you're sure. Listen, Fred, without trust, there'd be no trading, would there? Now, there's Tasty's bit, and there's mine. I'm sure you'll find this all out. I'm sure it is, Arthur. Look, I just want to take a quick yeah, care. I'll be out in a minute. Oh, all right. Right. No, wait till they come out. I've been cornered, Terry. The bastards have cornered me. Nearly four grand. Oh, my God. I told you I never... This is no time for I told you so. Come on, I want them found. I want their bodies damaged and brutalised. I want my money back. Right. Go. Now, now. What are you, you think... doing here? What am I doing here? I am on surveillance. So am I. I was just in the process of nicking these two. And so was I. Mr Chisholm, Mr Rycon. Do you need a witness? Never mind all that, Daly. You are both nicked. Nick, hey? what for? Oh, wait a minute, Rycott. This is my collar, if you don't mind. It is not. We've been mine. watching them all evening. So are we. Open up the back of this van. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What are you all talking about? Hold on. Wait. Do you mind? As a matter of fact, I do. Anything we can assist you gentlemen with? Hmm? It's always the same these days. You can't trust anyone, not even your so-called friends. I don't know why you're having a go at me, Arthur. It's not my fault you got cornered. You vouchsafed their credentials. You said they were proper people. I just said they were a couple of your own who didn't mind putting their hands in their pockets. If you ask me, it's tasty you ought to be having a word with. Well, don't worry, I've got Terry out looking for him now. Oh, that's cool. How's the wonder dog? Homesick. The Battersea. <laughs> Oi! Terry! Yeah. Just on my way round to Arthur's lock up to pick up me bit of gear. Good, because I've got a word with you. What about? What about? I'm talking about three grand's worth of non-existent videos that you sold Arthur. Non-existent? What are you talking about? Just get in the motor, eh? Are you telling me you didn't collect? Just get in the motor. You must be maltreating him somehow. Maltreating him? This dog of dogs has had more steak stuck in him than Dracula. Overfeeding it, then. Listen, this animal you foisted on me will not run. It is immobile. Im this is a stationary dog. Oh, I don't understand. It ran for me. Perhaps that is because you were prepared to do unspeakable things to its nether regions. I personally am not prepared to subject myself or this miserable beast to such a distasteful ordeal. So what do you want to do? Not what I want to do, it's what I'm doing. I'm backing it. In what race? I am backing it whence it came, to this knackered yard. What am I supposed to do with it? I don't care. Teach it to lay down, play dead. That shouldn't be difficult. I want my 200 sobs.
Jolly. Just between you and me, Tiff, right? Who was it who already hide it for you? Well, just between me and you, John, if I told you that, and Chisholm got to know, I'd be back in the Three Valleys, directing traffic. I swear, Arthur, my eyesight, I'm just as gutted as you are. I can't believe they could have done this. There must be some explanation. There is. You bloody set me up. Us up, you mean? Come off it. I've done my dough as well. Money I trusted you to look after for me. Yeah, if anyone should have the ump around here, it should be me with you. Hit him, Terry. Hit him several times all over the place. That's not going to be necessary, is it? No, no, no. no. Look, Arthur, let's try and be reasonable Reasonable? About this. I have done three and a half grand in cold down to you introducing me to them reptiles. I want him back. Well, don't you think I want my bit back? Well, never mind all that crap. Where can we find these merchants? Well, I only know where they drink. Right, Tasty, let's go. Get in the back. Go, go where? Where your mates drink. And if I get my money back, I might even let you buy me one. Go on, get in the back. Go on. Bloody farcical. An exercise of mind-boggling ineptitude. What the hell do you think you both were doing? Well, as I have explained in my report, sir... All you have explained, Sergeant Rycott, is a remarkable aptitude for ignoring police procedure. Well, actually, sir... He... The same goes for you, Chisholm. Well, sir, if I... Haven't we got just... enough real villains running around this division free? without you wasting valuable police property and time on independent crusades after petty suspect characters like Daly and McCann? But with all due respect, sir, if that information had proved correct... But we it wasn't, was it? Well, no, sir. And uh, who are these mysterious informers whose identities you both seem at pains to hide? Well, actually, sir... The days of police officers keeping the identities of their own pet grasses to themselves are over. Do I make myself clear? Absolutely, sir. Oh, yes, of course, sir. Well? Actually, mine was anonymous, sir. If so was mine, sir. So was mine. Frankly, James, I'm getting a bit tired of your ineptitude. Me? What have I done? Well, not enough. Not nearly enough. Do what you tell me to do. Well, exactly. There's no drive, no ambition, no initiative. It's all left to me. Aye, aye. Give you a hard time, did he, Gav? What? Uh, the DI, like, you know. Give you a hard time. For example, you are friendly with Rycott's DC Manish, are you nut? Yes, we do have the occasional drink together, but... It's entirely beyond your ability to find out what Rycott and Menish are up to in the future and help by putting me in the picture. Did you glean anything from Jones? Like what? Like what is Chisholm's grass called? Like what is their next move? Well, he's very loyal to his governor, actually, Gov. So, uh... What's our next move? Find that bloody grass of mine and try and discover what the hell went boss eyed yesterday. We've been here long enough. Where are they? How do I know, Arthur? I'm normally in here every day. This is ridiculous. Oh, look, if you've got a bit of business to do, how'd you contact them, eh? I've got a number, and I. Well, why didn't you say so? It's only certain times of the day you can ring it. 
Might be all right oh, now. Come on, get on. What number is it? That one. Write that down. Good thinking, Terry. Two six. No answer. What now? I'm bursting for a leak. Go with him. No, 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 it's all right. There are no windows you can slip out of in there. You sure? Listen, listen, we can't keep hold of him indefinitely, can we? No. So why don't we just let him shoot off and I'll follow him a bit cunning, right? See if he is stitching us up or not. Well, he likes a bet, huh? What about that shop he generally uses? Spare me a pertinent suggestion, Mr. Jones, please. I think our best bet is to sit off outside his drum and wait until he shows. phone call to the telephone box. <laughs> he well stood it, didn't he? Done him like a kipper. Yeah, well, you want to stay convinced if you don't want to spank him off that Terry. I understand he's a bit useful. <laughs> what you going to say to him? Can we meet at a place of your convenience? Can I have my money back, please? They're long gone, Arthur. Dave, your positive pessimism is a constant source of comfort to me. Well, maybe Jerry will get lucky. I sincerely hope so. I'll never be able to hold my head up on the manor again if they get away with it and it gets about. You leaving? Mm, don't want to. Got to. Webbed up with her indoors. Staying overnight with the in-laws. Paul, give me strength. If Terry shows, I'll be back in the morning. I'll shed him. Drive carefully. Charlie, what are you doing here? What are you doing with this man, Rykert? Well, I don't suppose it matters very much now, Charlie, but this is my grass, Tasty Tim. Oh, no, he's not. He's mine. I can explain everything. It's 
the truth, Mr. Chisholm. Mr. Rycock. May I never see my poor sick mother again, alone in her wheelchair, at the old folks' home. Look, it wasn't my fault. The geezer with the videos didn't show. I mean, how was I supposed to know that would happen? Still doesn't explain how you gave this officer here the same information as you gave me without telling either of us. Mr. Chisholm means tasting. You gave us that false information separately. That is what I said. That is what I said. Thus occasioning a very serious waste of my valuable time. And mine, and mine. Not to mention causing Mr. Chisholm to crash his motor car into mine. What? What? It was you crashed into me. Look, Mr. Rycock, Mr. Chisholm, be fair. Put yourselves in my position. You both of you put the frighteners on me at the same time to come up with something. Well, when this scene turned up, I thought, do them both a favour. You know, what was I supposed to do? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you one last chance to come up with a result. And soon. Otherwise, you're going to be in serious trouble, my son. I shall personally see to that. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Chaff. Hey, what are you doing here without Mr. Chisholm on your arm? Don't mention that name. I'll have a large scotch, please, Dave. Followed quickly by another one. Not bad, is it? <laughs> Oh, yeah! And that's not all I have to put up with. Take your own side. No, what's that? I suppose you know what happened. I suppose you know what happened with Arthur and Teddy. Yeah, I understand they had a bit of aggro with your lot. Some sort of mistake, I heard. Mistake? <laughs> mistake isn't the word for it. Me and you, Dave. Strictly between you and me. Oh, Taff, I am well known for my discretion. You're joking. I'm not. Totally legless, apparently. Dave had to bung him in a cab, then he phoned me and told me what happened. <laughs> it's quite funny if you think about it, isn't it? Tasty having them both over. That's not funny, Terry. Back in night, the little rat bags had us all over. Yeah. And according to what Jones let slip the Dave, he's being pressured to put us on offer again. Yeah, and his two pals. I want to see him in intensive care. What? Well, you can bet that his two corner artists mates don't know he's a wrong one. Well, who cares what happens to them? After I get my money back, that is, which reminds me. No, we can use it, can't we? Use what? Here we go. I will break your arm, or I'll break his legs, or you give Arthur back his dough, all right? Don't get excited. We can sort this out without getting physical. Can we? You look ill, Jones. Well, I hope you're not going to use that as an excuse for being four hours late on duty. for a living, Arthur. No hard feelings, I hope. It ain't nothing personal. All right, Terry, you can chin them now. Oh, shut up, you've got your dough, ain't you? Eh? Hey? Listen, there's something you two ought to know. I think we ought to have a little discussion. Taste dear grass. Not only did he set Arthur and me up with you two, now he intends to set us all up to be nicked. Well, we'd better do something about that, then. Hey, Fred? Right. Well, what's my part in it, then? Well, Fred's gone to get the mug now. All you have yeah. to do is stand the van with a bit of gear. Yeah. Fred and I turn up with a mug and we do the usual. Show him the gear, agree a price and, uh, well... Yeah, well, like know. we done with Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> right. Go on, get him. Well, that's what she said. Yeah, what did you say your name was? Well, that don't matter, does it? 
Thing is, Tasty asked me to pass on this message because he couldn't get to a phone. Oh, yeah, and uh, he said, could you pass this message on to uh, Sergeant Rycock, is it? Yeah, he said something about um, keep him in the picture. Said you'd know what he meant. Aren't you going to tell Mr. Rycock, Gav? Why should I? Do you think he'd tell me? Sergeant Rycott. Yes. I see. Oh, yeah. And he said, uh, could you pass this message on to uh, Sergeant Chisholm, is it? Yeah, that's right. Well, I think... Don't we... think, Mellish. It's out of character. And besides, I can't tell him if he's not here, can I? Chisholm, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? Where are the others, and what, may I ask, are these? Well, uh... Go. What? Well, well, Charlie. What a coincidence. I don't believe this. Where's Daly and McCann? What? Now, look. I don't know how you come to be here, Charlie. My but... name is Albert! Come on, what happened then? They had another bloody rack about who was going to nick Tasty. <laughs> Once it was discovered, the TVs were banned like. Mind, don't ever let on I've told you all this. Chisholm would crucify me. Uh, don't worry, Taff, your secret's safe with us. Oh, go, can't you picture their faces? <laughs> they weren't too pleased, I can tell you. Yeah, well, just between us, Taff. Did they suss that someone we might know set them up? What do you bloody think? <laughs> Nothing they can do about it, though, is there? No! Excuse me, you've got to phone the governor. Mm. Chip or Charlie? His name's Albert. <laughs> oh, I guess better, doesn't it? Jonesy. Arthur. A paddy? You come to give me my tour? Yes, I have, Arthur. Hey? And I'll buy you a drink. What? Yeah, you did me a right favour, give me that dog back. Yeah. Turned out he was only suffering with some sort of virus. Just won a grade A race at the White City. Flew in. Nearly broke the track record. Trainer reckons he'll turn out to be a likely Derby prospect this year. Terry, hit him. Where's he running next and when? Terence. <laughs>